morning. Thank you for joining us. My name is Sherry and I'm here to bring the zoo to you on Facebook Live and I'm going to talk to you about our Western Lowland Gorilla Troop. So the gorillas, as you can hear, I'll start with the vocalizations. <laughs> that would be our guys. They're pretty excited to come out and right now you can see them getting uh, smashing coconuts. I'll try and talk over that. And chewing on brows. Jojo just grabbed a big piece of banana leaf. And that was Kula. They make these contentment, excited vocalizations when they are around food. And you can, you can probably hear them in the background. So, gorillas are the largest type of primates. The males can get up to 450 pounds and the females can get a little over 200, but we like to keep them around 200 pounds there. There's four subspecies of gorillas. We have Western Lowland Gorillas, Cross River Gorillas, Eastern Lowland Gorillas, and Cross River Gorillas, and Mountain Gorillas. I, in zoos, we have Western Lowland Gorillas. So they are found mainly in the central tropical regions of Africa in countries such as Cameroon, Central African Republic, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. They are considered critically endangered. They don't have many animal predators, but their biggest threat is from humans, from mining Colton in areas that they're found, and that's a mineral that's made in cell phones. Um, people will also destroy their habitat for logging, and they'll also hunt them for meat and trophies. One of the gorillas' behaviors that they do is nest building, and we provide these guys <laughs> with a lot of nesting material. They'll make a day nest, which is just some haphazard little nest each one can make. Uh, today they have some, some wood wool out there, but in the wild that's what they'll use is any kind of long grasses and branches and everything to make <laughs> nests from. And when they come off exhibit at night, they're they're provided with a lot more nesting material down there so everybody can make a night nest. And even little Allie makes her own nest and she's not even two years old yet. So, so some of the things that they eat, their main portion of their diet, are, it's mainly vegetables and a lot of leafy, as you can see. And what they have today is what we call browse. And that's what they, that's what they depend on. They have, today they have some bamboo, some ficus, and the banana leaves are gone already. But that's, that's the main staple of their diet. They get this big and strong on basically just browse, leafy. Here we also provide them with a variety of different leaves. And they have kale and escarole and lettuce and romaine and they'll also get some vegetables today their veggie is green pepper and uh, they'll also get starchy like corn and and sweet potato and such um, they get a little bit of fruit but again their main staple is just a lot of leafy uh, while you're talking about that do you want to mention the comed browse program oh yeah definitely i'm i'm on the the browse team here at brookfield zoo and what we have developed with our nutritionists is a ComEd browse program that Lynette mentioned. It is, we get these browse deliveries twice a week, especially during the summer months when, we're, when we have more branches, but basically it's all the branches that ComEd has to trim around the electrical lines and stuff in your neighborhoods. So long as none of those branches and none of those trees have been treated with any kind of pesticide, which they're not, they'll, they'll take these, they'll trim them down and then they drop them off 
at the zoo and then we distribute them to all the areas in the zoo. And the gorillas in this building and the colobus and the orangutans in our building get, get some of that delivery as well. Um, some of the questions that I get asked is how much do they eat in a day? Well, Jojo, whose back is to us there, he can eat up to 30 pounds of food a day. And the females will eat around 16 pounds. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about enrichment because it's kind of cool to watch them doing this, but what Kula had in her hand was a coconut. So we gave them some coconuts for fun. Uh, it's not something that they get every day. And what Kamba is working on down here, that's a bark chip feeder, but there's, there's peanut butter inside those little tubes in there. And she had already tried to work out some of the peanut butter using either her fingers or the stick or long celery stalks that were there. Um, you know, I'll pan back to Joe because this is a good time to describe the difference between males and females. So Jojo, obviously, from the way he's sitting, is our silverback male. <laughs> um, they, they start to get a silver pellage, the males do, on their backs. When they turn around 13 to 17 years of age, it'll really fill in. They'll get huge, big, and strong, and they'll develop a sagittal crest on the top of their head. And his son is out here, and there's Zachary. And Zachary, you can see, he doesn't, he, he's just a little guy still. He's only four and a half years old, so he doesn't have any of that coloring, but he'll get as big as Jojo someday. And then that's little Allie who's coming down, and she's, she'll, she'll be two on June 1st of this year. Um, I'd like to show you some of some props that I brought out so you can kind of see the size of these guys. So this here, this is a replication of a skull of a male gorilla. This shows, this is that sagittal crest that they get on the back of their heads like that. And you can also see their strength in their jaws. This is a replication of their teeth and how big those, those canines really get. And this helps, the, see how big their molars are, this helps to get their, to chew through all that, the browse that's out there. And they'll eat the bark and everything. So right now what we're filming is, it's snowing on the exhibit of popcorn. And this is another fun enrichment device that we have. And it just rained from the sky, popcorn, so the guys really are enjoying it. I tell you, it's hard to compete with these guys. They're so dynamic. <laughs> uh, I'd like to also show you how big their hands are, too. So this is a cast of one of our male gorillas that had passed. This is Ramar's hand cast. And just to show you, they have fingerprints, just like you can see and then just to give you an idea of the size like my hand just fits in the the palm of his hand so they're they're quite impressive these guys are <laughs> you can still hear cool grumbling over that popcorn some other things i'd like to mention is that gorillas are part of a species survival program and SSP is what we call it for short, but that's how that's how gorillas are managed in in zoos, and it's also in, <laughs> the, they're so they have, happy. <laughs> they are so. Kula just keeps. <laughs> that's her excited vocalization. So that's how uh, the gorillas are managed in zoos and how zoos work cooperatively with each other is through this SSP, this Species Survival Program. And each individual gorilla in North America is looked at. They, they see their genetic makeup on there. They see their, how they're related to each other. It also will provide information that shows 
um, let, let alone their age, how many, how many offspring that they've had. So it's, it's a collection of gorilla experts from around North America zoos that help do the behavior, husbandry, nutritional care, and management of the gorillas. Um, the, other, the other thing I'd like to mention too is, as you can see, we've got a couple little kids out here. Um, so our troop consists of Jojo, our silverback male. He has three females in his group. We have Binti, who's chowing on some ficus right there. And we have Kamba with a handful of popcorn. And we have Kula with her back to us. And then we have Jojo's three offspring in the group. And that's Nora, who's six and a half, Zachary, who's four and a half, and little alley girl. And oh, with a big coconut. Oh, dear. <laughs> and again, she'll be two on June 1st. So it is up to the females when they are ready to breed to solicit. Huh. She's like, thanks, Ma. To solicit the male. They generally have one offspring at a time and they won't breed until they are ready to take care of that second offspring so it could be it's up to the females again it could be anywhere between three to five years that they have another offspring um, and the the offspring the infants that turn into juveniles they stay dependent on their moms for a very long time and then even when they're not as dependent they stay in their natal group they can stay in their natal group up to 10 years of age, up to 13 years of age. Again, it's dependent on how they're treated in their natal group. <laughs> there goes Nora. <laughs> I'd also like to mention our, our great vet care that we have. We do do training with these guys. Um, and the training consists of them presenting mainly their body parts for inspection. So like the bottom of their hands, the bottom of their feet, stuff that we can't see that well while they're on exhibit. Uh, they'll present their ears if we needed to take a temperature, their mouths so we can see inside for any kind of dental issues. Uh, we can also have them present their chest to listen to heart rate, their backs for respiration. Uh, but Anything that we do training really helps our, our vet team out and they depend on the keepers to let them know when they, when they stray from the norm. And our vet team will also provide great vet care. We have them right here on zoo grounds and then they can bring in human specialists for issues such as cardiac, reproductive, and dental health. So these guys really are, are well cared for, I have to say. So September 24th is World Gorilla Day, and World Gorilla Day creates the opportunity for people all over the world to come together and celebrating gorillas, and really importantly, taking action to protect these endangered animals in the wild. There's many great organizations and individuals dedicated to fighting for their survival, but greater awareness and investment are essential to gaining ground for all four gorilla subspecies. So, World Gorilla Day strives to be the rallying point for bolstering appreciation and action for these great apes. Well, I can, if anybody has any more questions about these wonderful animals, I'd be happy to answer some questions as they continue to just show off for us. Uh, somebody wanted to know why it looked like you could see Jojo's ribs from the back. His ribs? Oh, yeah. those are muscles, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, no, his, that's actually his, his whole muscular stature. His, his ribs are not, are not showing. Um, it might be difficult to tell more on camera than here, but when he sits down, that's just all... All muscle right there. Uh, how old are all of the the little ones? Okay, so we have Allie again. She's going to be two on June first, and then we also have Nora, who's up there right now. She's six and a half, 
She's one of Kula's. Nora is Kula's daughter as well as Allie. So that also shows how they have a four year age difference. So that they. And then Zachary, who's out there, he's not visible from this angle, but he's four and a half. And that's Kamba's offspring. And then as far as the other oh, Zach, oh, yeah. as, as far as the adults go, Binti is the grandma, and she's 32. Kula's 25, and Kamba's 16. Um, we had a question about training specifically with Binti. Does she have any specific training that you do with her because she's a little bit on the geriatric side? Oh, well, yeah, actually, with Binti, she... Not, oh, there she is. She's down there. Um, we do training with actually reproductive training where we can do um, ultrasounds, repro reproductive kind of ultrasounds with her. Um, we also do, if she ever needed a hand injection, if she needed to go to the hospital, we do training where she'll present her muscle and the, mainly her, her um, mainly on her arm, on her bicep, and we can do a hand injection with her. So it's, it's stress-free, it's, and she doesn't realize what's happening. She goes to the hospital, she comes back, and it, we like to keep it just nice and calm for these guys. Um, we'll also do an open mouth. She does a fun tongue waggle and stuff, but uh, we kind of throw in some fun behaviors, but with her we can also uh, take photos of her dental if we need to and send that to the vets before any kind of exam. Uh, which of these animals were born here at Brookfield Zoo? Oh, okay. Uh, almost all of them. <laughs> Actually, uh, almost all of them, just Jojo and Binti were not. So uh, Kula was born here, Kamba was born here, and all the three youngsters were as well. And I'd like to follow up with that by saying we do a lot of maternal care with them, but the moms can take the best care of them. So when they are born, for example, I'm not sure if anybody was here last year and saw moms away and saw Allie be born. She, Kula gave birth midday on exhibit. We all knew she was ready to give birth. Their gestation is around eight and a half months. So we knew that she was getting ready to give birth. We saw her laboring in the morning, but kind of at that time is when you need your family group around you the most. So we just keep them in their same routine. We don't separate the moms and we keep a good eye on them to make sure that they're not in any kind of distress. And she wasn't. And she wound up just giving birth to Allie right on exhibit. And then what we do as um, keepers is we monitor them at least for 24 hours. We keep Kula with, with her baby, we keep her with the group, and we make sure that the baby starts nursing within 24 hours. And if she doesn't, then if we ever need to intervene medically, again, we have that great vet staff that we can, but Again, the moms can take care of their babies the best, and we're here just to make sure they're doing the good job. How big do they get? How big do they get, or how big are they when they're born? How big, how big do they get as adults? As adults? Yeah. Oh gosh, so Jojo, well, he's, he's at 415 pounds, um, but some silverbacks can get up to 450 pounds, depending on their, their stature, uh, the males stand about five to five and a half feet tall, and the females, they're usually around 200 to 225. Um, our females are kind of slight, like uh, Kamba, she weighs around 180, 180 pounds, and they don't stand as tall as the silverbacks do. Do they walk on their knuckles? Oh yeah, they're great knuckle walkers. That's their main way of locomoting is by knuckle walk. So these guys, they stand on their back feet and then they, they use their front arms 
um, and their knuckles to be able to support the weight of their, their body. And that's their typical way of locomoting. It's, it's funny when they do locomote with just their back legs. Um, but yeah, when they're on all four limbs to support their, their stature is the most comfortable for them. What is their life expectancy? Ah. Um, so in zoos, it's a lot longer than in the wild. So in zoos, some gorillas are living around 50 to 55 years now. And again, that's because of all the medical that we can provide. Um, whereas in the wild, it's still between 35 to 40 years. And that's also just mainly due to a lot of human encroachment on them. So what kind of predators do they have in the wild? Leopards would be the, the main uh, animal predator, but it's, like I had mentioned before, these guys are hunted for what's called bush meat, and that's where people will hunt them and kill them either for their meat, but mostly trophies. Some people just kill, kill them and, and use their hands as ashtrays. And so. There is a bushmeat crisis that, that when we have our Ape Awareness Days, we provide brochures so people can learn more about that. And it affects a lot of animals in Africa. Do they know their individual names? Some of them do, yeah. Some, I, I have to say when I come out here and if I need to get one specific animal's attention and I could call their name, they'll look right at me. So I, I believe that they do because we use their names a lot when we train them. So it's just like, it's just like how people learn their names almost. Um, I actually, I have a question about the how big they are when they're born, now that you mentioned that. Oh, yeah. So it can be anywhere between three to five pounds. Most, most infants are, they are born so tiny that they're about as big as the silverback's hand. So they are born at just about, like I said, three and a half to five pounds. And the moms will hold them close to their chest for months. And it's all gone up to the mom and they'll stay just on their chest, it could be four to six months, and then the mom will slowly let the infant ride on their back closer to a year. But again, it's all dependent on, on the mom. Like Kula is now an experienced mother, so sometimes she'll, she put Allie on her back at like a month and a half. <laughs> she looked like a little peanut up there. And Zachary, oh, he's still a mama's boy, and he, he'll still ride on Kamba's back from time to time. And you're thinking, you're, you're old enough. You're four and a half. <laughs> you don't have to ride on your mother's back. <laughs> How many gorillas are typically in a troop? That's a good question, too. We have a good standard group size with, again, like one male, three females that he can breed with and then his offspring but it can get much larger you could have up to 15 animals I'd say in a troop if you know our if it can if you can hold that many um, but sometimes you can have two separate matra lines and that's from the females so you can have one silverback male with two separate groups of females and that can, that's what attributes to building the group even larger. Oh my gosh, look at Kamba. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she so, just hoarded some brows. <laughs> <laughs> She's hoarding. <laughs> How are they able to stay up in the trees without falling out? I know, that's a great question. Uh, they have extreme balance. I, I respect the way that they're able to climb every day because we go up there to clean up after them and to to set up the exhibit for them and 
we have to harness up and have all our safety gear on, so I totally appreciate how they can do it without, uh, without falling, without even thinking. Uh, does it rain on the gorillas? We do have a rain system here in Tropic World. Uh, however, because of, I had mentioned earlier about nest building, and we want to make sure that they have nesting material provided to them, we don't have it rain on the mountain. We just have it rain over the rivers in the monkey exhibits. Uh, we had a question about Ramar. Can you tell oh. us a little bit about why he was separated from the others and what happened to him? Oh, yeah. So Ramar, he was, he was my best buddy. Um, he Basically, he, he was our silverback leader of the group. He sired some offspring. And then silverbacks hit a certain age where they just are not interested in reproducing anymore. And the females kind of let us know. They guided us that way where it was, he was getting older. He had, did not have an interest in making any more babies. And the females started harassing him. They started, every time he'd make a night nest, they'd come by and, and grab all his hay. He, he was one, he was very tidy. He was one that liked to gather up his food and set it down. And he would be mid-chew on a big carrot and his, his offspring would come by and just steal all his food from him. And he, he stopped fighting. He stopped like asserting dominance over them. He just kind of became complacent like, okay, I guess I'm not gonna eat tonight. My kids got the food. So it was more of a behavioral thing that we were seeing, and we felt it was in the best interest of all of them to get a younger male in and then have him live out his geriatric years in another exhibit that we had. So we were able to still provide, he was in the same holding area, we were still able to provide excellent care to him, and he wound up passing around the age of 50 in just his mainly due to just I'll just say old age related issues that everyone will get eventually but um, yeah it was in his best interest Sorry, I got, I got all caught up in that story and I forgot to look for another question because I, <laughs> oh, I, really, I could go on I, and on about... I really love yeah. Jamar too. He was my, my favorite. I actually, I could, I could explain more. Training that I did with him, again, with the training and, and providing with vets, I was able to put, uh, I could monitor his blood pressure, putting a baby cuff on his finger. And again, all the training that we do is called operant conditioning and it's positive reinforcement and it's totally up to the animals if they want to participate in it or not and he would he would just sit there and allow me to put a baby cuff on his finger so i could get blood pressure i could listen to his heart take his respirations and report that stuff again to the vets and he was kind of doing physical therapy too when he yeah. had arthritis right yeah so and that was the other thing working closely with the vet staff they uh, he, w he had a physical exam, and then I was able to see exactly what would be his comfort zone and his range of motion. And I did uh, physical therapy, like Lynette just mentioned. I did his training with him where I would take a, a dowel, and he would have to stand and sit. So that was for his knees, and then he'd have to reach up high and touch the dowel and then come back down and touch it low. And... He didn't like the physical therapy as much, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I kept telling him it's for his own good, but he didn't want to believe me. <laughs> I'm always amazed by what our vet staff is able to, to figure out, especially with our geriatric animals. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so in the wild, how would a younger silverback replace an older silverback? So what generally happens is a blackback might come into the group, and we call them blackbacks, even though they might still have a little bit of a silver pelage, but they would be unrelated to, to the females and to the male in the group. An unrelated male would come in and he'd start sitting peripherally. 
and he could be anywhere between 17, 18 years of age. He'll sit peripherally from, from the group trying to kind of quote unquote steal one of the females from the silverback. And if he's a young, thriving silverback or if he's still truly a dominant leader, he'll keep fighting that male off. As the silverback in the group ages, he might not be as protective of some of his females. So sometimes the subordinate female in the group might be taken by that male. She just might see a better liking in him um, because it's the hierarchy happens in the females in the group. So you have your dominant female and like in our group, Kula is our dominant female and Binti is our subordinate female. So I think that kind of answers the question a little, but that's kind of how it happens. Do they like to play? Oh yeah, they, <laughs> the kids especially, I shouldn't, the infants, the youngsters, they especially like to play. Um, so up top here we have Zachary and Allie, and they're half sibs, they have different moms, but oh man, she likes to taunt Zachary, and then Zachary will come after her and wrestle, and then she goes running to mama, but that's their way of play. And they actually have a vocalization that's a laughter. That's probably the one I cannot mimic, <laughs> but, but it's really fun. And they will, the moms and even uh, Jojo, he'll sometimes just flip the kids on their back and just kind of gently wrestle their little tummies and they'll start laughing and then run away. And they, yeah, the kids' antics are the best. And there goes the rain. Yeah. So I want to thank you again for joining us here at Brookfield Zoo for bringing the zoo to you. And again, my name is Sherry. And hopefully when we reopen, if you have any more questions, feel free to come on by and see our gorilla troop.